hello student, we continue the lesson again. There's a lesson 11.3, gravitational acceleration and also the free fall. So this one is a science topic, chapter 11. Let me see what we need to learn. Okay, first one, there's a talking about gravitational acceleration. Can you see the diagram? Something just dropped downwards. So this one we know that's a because of the force. So this one force normally we call it as a gravity, is it? So from here we never call it as a gravity. We call it as a gravitational force. So from here we can see all objects that have pulled downwards the center of the earth. By what forces? The forces we call it earth gravitational force. So the object they always will fall downwards. Okay, let's see here. This one is an example for the force to pull the apple go downwards. So the apple they fall due to earth of the gravitational force. But when it just fall down, they shrug up the velocity. So this one motion we call it as a gravitational acceleration. Because this one motion is caused by the gravitational uh, force to pull it to go down. So we add acceleration in front and put the gravitational. So from here, the symbol for gravitational acceleration, we're using the G. Okay, stand for the gravity. Okay, then the unit should be ms, uh, negative 2. You can say meter per second second. The same as the acceleration unit. Okay, now we're going to see the experiment. They want to find out gravitational acceleration actually is how many. Okay, so from this one experiment, we find it that A must be determined the value of a gravitational acceleration then by using the ticker timer. So the hypothesis, actually the acceleration value for the gravity, there's a 10 uh, meter per second second. So that means this one experiment, we want to prove is it we get the answer is it exactly 10 or not. So let's see the variable. First one, what we can control, we can control is the mass of the weight. That means we let the weight to free fall later. Then we check, is it the pull by the gravitational acceleration, is it same or not for the different masses? So the responding sure is a acceleration of gravity. Then the constant variable is height of the object, it will never change. So if the height you changes, sure you find it the acceleration is a different. So we constant the height. Okay, now we see the apparatus. We're using the ticker timer, the weight, G clamp, and also the power supply. Uh, one more is a material tab and also cellophane tape. Okay, this one, uh, we put a softboard. Okay, you see what's the function for the softboard. Okay, diagram. This one is a power supply. Then the ticker tape, they join with the ticker timer. So this one is ticker tape, make it longer. Then the ticker tape will join together with the weight. So bottom part should put the soft board because later the weight will hit to the soft board. Okay, now we're going to see the procedure. Okay, first one apparatus set up. Number two, we must say you clamp the ticker timer vertically on the retort stand, which is a place on the bench. Okay, next, put a ticker tab strike of one meter through the ticker timer. Okay, now you have the mass. So when you just mentioned 50 gram, this one is a manipulated mark. Okay, to the end of the ticker tape. Now you must add the word is switch on. Okay, because the switch on can help you to get the responding marks. Okay, after that, switch on the ticker timer, then we release the weight. So we're never using any force, we just release. So that means we just let the weight pull by the gravitational force. Okay, analyzing the ticker tape to obtain the value of the gravitational acceleration. So from the ticker tape, we're going to count what is the acceleration by using the normal formula. Okay, let's see the formula. This one is an example for the ticker tape. We get it for the free fall of the slot weight. So this part, when you see the arrow, they come out. This part means there's an initial velocity. So you can see it when starting, there's a slow. After that, the dot become further. So this one situation means they become faster. Okay, then calculation, we need to find out time for one tick, 0 0.02. That one is the standard for the ticker tape. Okay, after that, we see the initial velocity. Initial is a x1. So the x1 over 0 0.02. Okay, final is a x2. So we take 0 0.02 or so. 
Then the time interval, time interval we need to jump. So you follow the ticker tape here. Okay, we got six ticks, but when after you jump, you get five ticks only. Okay, so from here, we get five multiplied 0 0.02. Then the overall time interval is 0 0.1 second. So we apply all the thing to the gravitational acceleration formula. V minus U over T. So this process we need to repeat it until you using the different weight of the mass. So we're using 100, 150, 200 and also 250. Okay, let's see the result. Okay, this one is a result we get it after the experiment. For 50 gram, we get it the acceleration of the gravity. There's a 9.4. Then 100 is a 9.5, 9.6, 9.4, and 9.7. So you get the answer is almost start with the 9. Point something. So that means they will near or you say the almost become the 10 ms uh, per second second. So this one is what we prove. Is it the experiment get the gravity same as the actual number? So from here we see the conclusion. Okay, hypothesis is accepted. Gravitational acceleration is almost okay, same as the 10 meter per second second, and that does not depend on the mass and also object. So you see the result when I just increasing the mass, actually they don't have any affected about the gravitational acceleration. There's still 9 point something, that means they're almost near with the 10. Okay, so from here we find it, the value gravitational acceleration on the surface of the Earth, there's a 10. The value of the gravitational acceleration obtained, the no same as 10. Why? Why we cannot get actual? So this one is a reason. So you need to answer this question. Okay, first one, we find it, air resistance. Because we do this one experiment, there's a not actual free fall. Surrounding, we still got air resistance. They will affect the falling of the slot weight. Okay, number two is related with the frictional force. Okay, we got frictional force between the thicker tape and also the thicker timer. So that means when it just fall, they're going to want to overcome the frictional force. So finally, they need to uh, spend some time. Okay, when the time you spend more, so that means you make it the gravitational acceleration that will drop. So we can get not get the actual answer. Okay, then we're going to see some example for the free fall. Okay, this one, the first one they show about the free fall for the buildings. Okay, you can repeat to see. Okay, actually, uh, both different surface area, you find it, the falling time should be the different. Okay. Another side also same. You can see the feather, they drop slowly. When you see the pencil and also the stone, they will drop about faster. So this one, a paper or you say the feather, that does not fall freely. Okay, reason why they're not free about the freely, uh, fall about the freely, because the motion that's affected by the air resistance due to the surface area. Okay, so the object that's falling freely all will fall at the same gravitational acceleration. Okay, although they are dropped uh, slowly, some is dropped faster, but both also drop because of the gravitational force to put it, then the as, uh, gravitational acceleration should be the same. Okay, but they are not affected by the mass and also the shape. So they don't care the shape and so don't care about the mass. When they just free fall in the earth, they must fall with the earth gravitational acceleration. So the answer should be the that. Okay, now you see some experiment. Okay, this one is full with the A. Another one is a vacuum. So we go to observe the position of a paper and a stone. So in the A, you find it the paper is slow down. Okay, because they are affected by A molecule. In the vacuum, there's a no air molecule. They just pull by the gravitational force. So you find it, although the paper is lighter, the stone is more heavier, both also fall down at the same time. So another also like this. This one also is a situation for vacuum. So it's one kilogram weight. Another one is a feather. The feather should is lighter, is it? But when it just free fall at the same height, both will reach at the ground 
at the same time because both have the same gravitational acceleration. That's a 10 ms negative 2. So free fall only occur in the vacuum. That means no A molecule. So with A molecule, this one we just call non-free fall. Okay, you can see the example here. Okay, we repeat again. So you have five free four only in the vacuum. There's a no A molecule. Okay, you can see there's a drop together. Okay, so this one is a free four. Okay, the feather and the ball they drop and also reach at the same time. Okay, now we're going to see 4 in the A. That means they got surrounding, we got A resistant to affected. Okay, you can see the ball come down first, then the feather that's still moving. Okay, finally drop. So this one is a what's different? For free fall in the A and also free fall in the vacuum. So this one we can call it as a non free fall, there's a non perfect. So in a vacuum, there's a perfect of the free fall. Okay, so now we need to explain the motion of the graph when they free fall. So example, the first one, the ball, you drop. Okay, drop the ball, go down. So you find it first, you're never using any force. You just release. The ball when starting, the velocity sure is a zero. Okay, before they move. Okay, when it just release, you find the velocity become increase and increase before they go to touch to the ground. So from here, we can draw the graph for the VT graph. When starting, there's a zero because there's a stationary. Okay, then the velocity, they will keep increasing, okay, because they pull by the gravitational force and also move by gravitational acceleration. So we go to explanation. Okay, the first one, before release, okay, we find it the velocity object, that's a zero. Okay, now at the middle, we find it velocity increasing uniformly. So the gradient of the VT graph actually is the acceleration. This one acceleration, we call what name? There's a gravitational acceleration. Okay, now we're using the displacement time graph to explain the just now situation. So you can find the curve up. Curve up means the increasing. Velocity is increasing, but you can see the triangle. The triangle is represent the gradient. So that means when you find the gradient is more sharp, that means the velocity should be the higher. Okay, now we're going to see here. Before release, object displacement is a zero. That means before they start to drop. Okay, at the middle, the object start to release. They fall with the small velocity. So that means the gradient also becomes smaller. So after that, during the free fall, that means they go downwards, the object now fall with higher velocity so this part you'll find it the gradient become bigger okay now we go to situation is opposite okay they threw the object upwards that means they're against the gravitational force so when they just against the gravitational force we can call it as an anti-gravity so that means you must push the ball upwards okay using the force to push the ball upwards so the ball when thrown vertical upwards, velocity will start to decreasing. Why the velocity decreasing? Because they're against the direction of the gravitational force. Gravitational force is always pulled downwards, but the ball now they move upwards. So you see the velocity graph. When starting, velocity should be the height because you go to push. Okay, after that, slowly, slowly until the maximum height velocity will drop until zero. Okay, let's see the explanation. Okay, when thrown upwards, the object moves with the V. That means V is a maximum velocity. Okay, at the middle, the velocity will keep decreasing. As the object, they move upwards, there's a negative gradient. Okay, last, the maximum height velocity of the object will become zero. That means become zero means the object will really start to drop. Okay, now we convert just now the VT graph, go to displacement graph. Now we, the explanation should be the same. Okay, as the thrown upwards, the ball will move V velocity. At the same time, the displacement of the ball also changes.
because you got move, then the displacement sure got changes. Okay, the ball move upward with decreasing velocity. When you find the graph, they drop. Okay, so maximum displacement is a zero velocity. That means the object with momentary, they stop before they're falling back to the downward. Okay, so this one is the topic for 11.3. So this one is a formative practice from your textbook. Just two questions only. Come, we're going to discuss this answer. Okay, first one, they say the free fall is a motion of an object due to free fall because of force to pull it. So this one, force, we call it gravitational force. So the non-free fall motion, non-free fall means they're not doing in the vacuum. They will be affected by air resistance. So C is the acceleration due to gravitational force that acting to the object towards the earth. So this one, acceleration, we call it as a gravitational acceleration. Okay, now question two, they show the graph. Okay, they show about a free fall object. There's a displacement versus time. So you can see the graph. There's a curve go up, means they keep increasing. So this one situation sure is a fall down, not upwards. There's a fall down. So you need to explain the graph. So we go and see the answer. Okay, before being released, we're talking about a zero. So the displacement of the object is a zero because the object is stationary. Okay, now we go to middle. Middle the gradient is a less. So from here at the moment the object release, they move with low velocity. They can see because we know there's a gradient is a small. Okay, until upper part. Upper part you draw the triangle, you find it the triangle gradient become the sharp. So from here, in the final state, when the object just free fall, they move with velocity is greater than the initial state. So we can find greater gradient. So this one is the an answer for 11.3. So hope you understand about this topic. So we will see you soon for the next coming topic. Thank you for your watching. Thank you.